Hey YouTube, what's up? I'm Alan. This is my favorite drill rig. Let me show you how to build it. So yeah, I've messed with uh, conveyors and merge blocks and all those sorts of things to try to make uh, tunnel boring or infinite drill rigs in the past and I don't know, I just, it, it's annoying. Um, it occurred to me, I don't know, a couple years ago that we actually have a block that can pass cargo and connect two grids and also has the benefit of not having a collision box that interferes with things and so this is what I came up with um, I mean I've, I've decorated it a little bit here with the uh, you know the catwalk for uh, jetpackless play and you know the control station right up front for well controlling you can even go uh, a bit further uh, over here, like, you know, we have the projector projecting the next segment forward. If you're going to put this welder in, which is kind of what I do as a minimum, just so that it, it welds up the, you know, its own conveyor anyway, this block space is important. That extra block there. This one is not as important, though I sometimes put it in. It gives you room to put something like the uh, helm up there. In the example here, I've done a back and forth drill rig, which gives you a nice straight tunnel, uh, straight vertical walls, straight flat top and bottom. You do get, obviously, a you know because you're swinging back and forth, you get a curved back wall. You can deal with that or drill further than you intend to and then just you know hide the curve I've shown it just here with uh, you know too wide but you could go considerably wider I've done I don't know 20 or so blocks total width so you know 10 conveyor ishes you can get really crazy and if you want to weld a whole lot of area and you have the production to support it you can weld this as your drill swings uh, you could certainly go more drills. That's uh, up to you. This also works uh, upside down. If we were to build it hanging like this, um, you could, you know, maybe use it to go across a a ice leak and you know have your drills like hanging down. Uh, it also works vertically. I've dug hundreds of meters down or up. Here, up. <laughs> you can build it with all kinds of different drill heads. This is just the waggly one. Another one I like is you put a rotor and then another hinge. And you have the hinge swing out from straight up to 90 degrees as the rotor is rotating. So you get a nice semicircle in front of the drill. Yeah, lots of options. Let me show you how you build it. We need to build something kind of like this here because we need some clearance to put the uh, advanced rotors in. So I'll usually start building the line of conveyors. Uh, the measurements here are, are one junction or T. You could use the T's. I like the junctions and then three other conveyors and then another junction or T and then on one of these build out a block and put a piston going upward I like to set the limits to a min of 2.4 and a max of 6 or so it's not particularly critical you just need a bit of room and then once you've got that you can place your advanced rotor I'm a little picky, so I always line them up in the same direction. And with build info, I like to do it with the red axis forward. The actual moving part of the rig, this here is, uh, you build your piston up, you attach a, you can use a whole block, but I like the half block. So I don't have to worry about collisions then a conveyor or a T 
or even just a right angle. Uh, sometimes I use cargos. Uh, the piston going in the direction you plan on drilling. And then another conveyor or, you know, a junction or a regular straight conveyor. You could use tubes, but I like having surfaces to attach to. Another conveyor or T. And then on each of these two ends, you place your advanced rotors like we've done here. Um, if you're using build vision or whatever, you can detach those. If you're building in uh, creative, I'll just go ahead and get rid of it. And then you come over and just place some new ones some new rotor heads down here. You can actually use either the advanced rotor head or the regular rotor head. Obviously the advanced one is the only one that'll pass cargo, which is kind of, you know, what's cool about this whole setup. Uh, if you did the limits the way I do with the 2.4 meters min and six max, it will drop down right on like that. You can Nope. Attach. And attach. Uh, one thing to note is that, th that this, that the piston is actually slightly larger than two blocks. It's like 2.1 something meters, 2 point, I, I don't know what it is. So if you look carefully, you'll see that we've actually got a bit of a bow here. If that bothers you, then this method might not be for you, but yeah, I dig it, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, then yeah, you just come here and get rid of this junk, and then build whatever type of drill head you want on it. In the example, I did a conveyor, a welder with its conveyor ports oriented this way, another conveyor and a hinge going this way but you could you could build all kinds of drill heads of any length then to use it uh, at, at a minimum you can use it by hand you just sort of detach the front I would push this forward at, you know, something slow, but for the video, I'll just send it forward. If we had a blueprint here, we'd be welding this as we go. If you do make a blueprint, don't forget to include the advanced rotor heads, unless you feel like adding those yourself. When you get to the end, you attach the front one, which I usually like to name these so that it's very obvious what's going on. Detach the rear and then reverse the piston. If you want to automate this, you can set up some uh, automation with timer blocks and event controllers. One of the things I kind of like to do with the event controllers is set up one that looks for the connected state on both of these two rotors. And when it detects that it's detached, it, it attempts to connect the other one. I'll let you figure out how I came up with that. Even more, you can you can get really creative. Uh, let's say we wanted to... Actually, let's use this other one. We wanted to be building a base inside the mountain, and we don't really want our refineries and stuff sitting out here permanently. You can... Oh, I don't think I have them on my normal hotbar spots on here. Hang on. You could start small and place a refinery and a even a basic assembler. Sorry, let's get rid of build vision or build info. 
uh, or a full-size assembler or yeah the uh, full-size assembler goes even in this direction although you can run into some problems you don't I don't think you clip through those heads but if you're building a tall entrance you could just oh, scroll and hit the wrong one you could do like that and then we could put our assembler on here so then you could uh, process your stone as you go throw some speed modules on there assuming you've got some source of power assemble all of your materials as you go and then once you get inside you could really lo locate those to wherever you want on the base yeah so that's uh, that's my favorite style of drill rig I'll leave the automation to you I often just use them manually I push forward with the piston at about point two meters per second which is what a hundred five hundred seconds so that's six uh, eight minutes so while the drills moving forward or if I have a uh, event controller set up to you know waggle back and forth and then extend you know two meters every time you know it'll be you know 10 or 20 minutes that while this is going I can be doing something else and then you know so I have to babysit it occasionally to attach and detach the heads and then extend it if you're planning on you know going quite a distance you can you can automate it one thing I actually I was gonna end but one thing I like doing for that is something like this if you switch to small grid here you could place a whole bunch of timer blocks event controllers and stuff directly even on the drill uh, and then that way you don't like build them you know out here where you're parking area is intended to be and you don't have to build them in large grid where they take up you know a ton of space so yeah that's my favorite drill rig let me try that again there's a few things I thought I would add if you if you do like this with the refiner refinery and you place it in this orientation so that we have the conveyor on the back there you can actually attach another rotor here if we give ourselves a bit of room you can actually just put another uh, advanced rotor head that lines up nicely with the bottom of the refinery and then you can attach both of these before you extend and then again when you after you retract one thing that's nice about that if you are trying to go in a nice straight line when you have the the front rotor detached if you've got a lot of weight swinging around on there it can tend to try to swing the whole rig on this pivot point if you have a another rotor attached back here then well I can't do that along those lines though I do like setting the braking torque and the torque on the rotors themselves relatively high I don't like using uh, rotor lock because you know rotor lock is bad and stuff and then let me um let me just set up a little waggly thing oh here we go I don't have the drills running because noise and you, know, you get the idea you can accomplish this really with uh, two event controllers a timer block uh, it's helpful to have a second timer block though we'll use the timer blocks to detect the when the rotor gets to the min and max 
So we just have one setup, you know, angle changed equal or less than, I use negative 89.9. Uh, and then the actions, the first thing I like to do is turn off the event controller that just triggered because we don't have any hysteresis. And the last thing I want is this to like re-trigger accidentally and then turn on the other side. So you'll notice that these will be flopping back and forth between yellow and green. And then just trigger the extend timer block. The max is exactly the same way, Oops, sorry, except that it's greater than, equal or greater than 89.9 on the rotor for the hinge. It's, you know, turn itself off, turn on the other one, trigger the extend timer block. The timer block extend. I like to explicitly make sure the piston is going in the right direction and then give it a increase maximum distance and then trigger, not trigger, but start the reverse timer because it's nice to have the drill push forward, wait a few seconds and then swing. In order to get multiples, since when you do the increase maximum distance, it increases a half a meter at a time. You can just place additional increase maximum distances on additional uh, toolbars. In this case, I've just got it set basically to do 10 meters, or sorry, a meter. And then, yeah, and then it just triggers the reverse timer block, which is just, you know, work out what is a reasonable time for your drill to extend for your reverses, you know, 10 to 12, maybe 15 seconds. And then that's all it does is reverse the hinge. And so that's exactly the same on either end, on the min or the max. And then there we go. We have a waggly drill that will automatically extend itself until it reaches the end of this piston. And then, you know, you have to come back, obviously, and mess with the things unless you do additional automation. For example, you know, when it does hit the end, you have to come back and change the maximum distance. You'll have to attach and detach and, you know, do all that jazz. But yeah, if you get, you know, six or eight minutes of time while it's just going back and forth and you could do something else, in my book, that's a win. So if this was useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.